I hadn't done one of my graphic novel review videos in a while so I figured it was time. I've read three graphic novels and one picture book which I'm just going to include in this video as well. And quite interestingly I have a lot of mixed opinions. Some of these I really loved, some of these I didn't. I think I might just start it off with the picture book because why not? I read this actually at the end of last year but never got around to talking about it and it is The Lists. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. For this one it's a collaboration so there is an author and an illustrator. And this picture book is about the family, the lists. As you might be able to see from the title, what they love doing is making lists. The illustrations are really, really gorgeous, but the colors to them are quite dark, and so it gives it quite a, a gothic vibe. And also, in a way, it looks a little bit like Russian, perhaps? And I think it also sort of matches quite well with like a series of unfortunate events. And it's about kind of the youngest son and about what happens when a strange visitor arrives. Obviously this is quite a quick one to read, like it will not take you more than, I don't know, like 15 minutes. I thought it was very charming. There wasn't like a huge plot twist, but I did think it was, you know, just really, really charming and really lovely and also absolutely gorgeous. So in the back there's portraits of the illustrator and the writer. The writer is Keo McClear and then the illustrator is Julia Sarda. It has a little list of what they are. So it says, a compulsive buyer of books, a rescuer of plants, a toaster of toasts. I think I'm gonna save my absolute favorite to last. So I might just move into the one that I didn't enjoy very much. And it is Adrian Tomine's Sleepwalk and Other Stories. As you might remember, I reviewed his most recent graphic novel, Killing and Dying, and that had six short stories in it. I absolutely loved it. I feel like I included it in my favorite 10 books of last year, so I was really excited to read this, which is some of his earlier work, and I'm afraid that I just really didn't get on with it. I love open endings in general. I felt like most of these stories had open endings that didn't really leave you with anything to think about, so they just sort of ended. A lot of the stories were really sad and really lonely. Again, something I usually really enjoy, but I just didn't connect with this one. So I'm gonna try his other stuff as well. I've got a couple more of the graphic novels. These were sent to me by his publisher. I'm gonna give the other ones a go and I'll let you know what I think and what my favorites are. I also find it so interesting going on Goodreads and reading really positive reviews of things that you didn't like. I don't know, I find that almost more interesting than reading reviews of stuff you liked and that other people didn't. Okay, so next up I have the second in the Unwritten series. So if you remember from the first one I reviewed, this is basically a sort of spin-off of Harry Potter. But this guy called Tom Taylor, his dad wrote a famous book series called Tommy Taylor series, I guess, which is basically Harry Potter. And then one day his dad disappeared and he, and now Tom has sort of gotten involved with this mysterious thing that's happening and the world of the Tommy Taylor books are slowly bleeding into his world. So I've just read the second one and it gets really freaking dark. The main baddie in the series is there. Again, it has so many, let me find them, gorgeous illustrations on the pages in between. And I currently also own number three and four. So I'm gonna continue with these. I read this while I was on holiday this time and just really enjoyed it. And I like the fact that you're just reading the separate story, but it's also, you know, a little bit related to something you know. If some of you are like way on into the series, I don't even know how many bind ups there are at the moment, let me know what you think. I'd be very curious to see how it develops. And finally, there's one that I showed in my April book haul and it is The Spill Zone. I decided to sort of read it immediately. It's by Scott Westerfeld in collaboration with Alex Paveland. It is about this girl who lives close to the spill zone. There was this weird accident that happened in her city. And what she does is she goes in on her motorcycle and takes pictures, that's completely abandoned, of the aftermath of it and then sells them. And I don't quite know how to explain the stuff that goes on in the spill zone, but it is freaky. And I think what makes for a really good graphic novel is every couple of pages, you just discover something new and something amazing. And I think here, the storytelling is really good, the illustrations are really good, the colouring is amazing. So this is like the colouring of a flashback, for example, out of the normal world. And then when she goes into the spill zone, the colours are just entirely different and it's really creepy and I would watch this as a film, I would read this as a book, but I think it's doing really well in its, its current form of a graphic novel. This is the first one because it says to be continued or more to come at the end. I absolutely love this. I thought it was fantastic and for it being a story that you can get through quite quickly, it contained so much. You know when like a fantasy book has lots of amazing world building and you know that outside of its pages there's much much more, that is what this feels like as well. Alright, so those were some graphic novels slash picture books that I read recently. I 
hope you enjoyed my little chat about them. Do let me know if you've read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up. I need to figure out when the next one of the Spill Zone is up. And that is it for me. Don't forget you can follow me on Goodreads at Books and Quills. I'm also on Twitter and on Instagram and on Instagram stories all at Books and Quills and I'll talk to you later. Doei!